Was there any questions regarding the lab yesterday? I think next week we are going to lay out a fast flood or using the OA logic. And on Monday we talk about the 3B flutter. Unless you tell me what are these signals. What is this? C, right? This? B what? Mm -hmm. What are these? Let's name it like that. <laughs> so in order to make a subtractor and adder at the same time, what are the circuits you added to it? Remember from Monday? What did we do for the one of the ports here? Here's the X4. Connect to where? A not yeah. Like this. A not. And the other pin is shorted for each of the XOR gate. They are shorted together to one line. And you have an option here for that um, signal line. Could be zero, could be one. So you can design a little switch over here. Switch to here or here, okay? And this line is also shorted to C in because whenever it's one, the XOR logic, if something XOR one, is it going to be flipped or going to be uh, maintained the same? Mm, flipped, right? So you flip it and then add a one. It's just uh, you're actually providing the two's complement to the circuit. So this is the design that we have used. This is the most popular one. You can see from other um, instructional materials or textbook. But we can also design the circuit using a different um, gate over here. What you think about that different design? It's just a making a switch, right? Or giving two choices. If we don't use extra gate, what else we can use? What you think? And how the connection should be uh, modified over here? How do we modify it using that specific um, component? I don't know if you still remember MUX. It's a multiplexer, right? So it has a selection pin, it's called S. If you have two inputs to select from to be delivered to the output, and that's a selected pin, how many selecting, selecting pins do you need for that MUX if you have two inputs to select from? Like A1, A0. You'll need just one bit for the selection pin because one bit will give you two options, zero and one. You can design the circuit using zero to select the A0 to the output, or you can use the uh, uh, when S is one, you select the A1 and send it to the output. Okay, that's a box, two to one box. Okay, based on the logic of the box, we can modify the circuit like from here to here and let it do the same functionality. C2, S2, S1, S, oh, no. S2, S1, S0, this is C0, C1, CI. 
B0, uh, B2, you put a mux here instead of using A2 directly. So mux's output is sending to the original A1, uh, A2, or A's. Okay, that's a mux. A mux has two inputs and one selection pin. What are the two inputs? If this is A2, can we put an inverter here? So that's A2 naught. Mm -hmm. And A1, A0. Do you need to short all the selection pins or they should be separate pins? Would you like to control them at the same time? Yes. So they should be shorted together. And um, similar uh, thing here, you can have a switch connect to one or zero. How do you design the switch in digital circuits? How to do it? It's basically just a passing a one or zero. You definitely need a one more input as a signal pin, right? It could be just a just a signal line, right? And you can generate generate the logic to provide the one or zero automatically from from the digital circuit, or you can directly feed a control pin from the outside board, right? If you connect this one to the outside output of the chip, okay. You just connect to here, then you just feed a signal um, to it. Maybe it's through the input here. I got a function generator providing a pulses. It's just doable, right? There are so many ways to do it. Mm. So these are mux, muxes instead of actual logic. Um, I think they should be in the same size, actually, if you just count the number of resistors. This is not significantly bigger than this, actually. How do we design the mux? We learned in logic, so we I think we should recap on that. How do we design the mux? By looking at the functionality here, so we can start designing the logic, and then transfer it to the circuit. So what's the first step to design the logic? Or to um, start the procedure? which result in a digital circuit. What's the, what's the first step? We know what we want, right? We, we need a one select, selecting pin. We need a two inputs and one output. So basically four pins, four pins. So two, three inputs and one output, okay? How do we design the mux? And because we, can consider this inverter inside the mux. We consider this as one chip. Can we? Why not, right? So this chip becomes how many pins? Three pins instead of four. You know, which even simplifies the circuit even further. Okay, can we consider this as a three pins? Um, definitely, yeah. Since we can just include the inverter as a logic component in the in the mux circuit, so th this won't be a general purpose mux. It's just going to be just for this circuit. Okay. Okay, so we have a s. and output wire, okay? 
So what is the next step for this mux? If S is zero, um, I want to pass a naught, for example. S is one, we pass A. Okay? So if S is zero, we are getting A naught, which is one, zero, right? And if S is one, we just pass A through, which is zero and one. And how do we simplify this circuit further? What's the next step? So we do it. Because it's just the two inputs, we can directly just write it down, right? So it becomes A not S not or AS. So if you have A and S here, that's A not, that's S not, so it becomes A not S not. and AS and OR. So what's really happening here? It's just a no logic, right? Is it? Yeah. Interesting. This is the first time I, I see this actually. Yeah. Isn't it more logic? Wait. Wait, wait. Yes. Oh, um, if, that's right, if S is 1, yeah, if S is 1, we want to invert it, right? So, if S is 0, we want to duplicate A, so it becomes 0 and 1. If S is 1, we want to invert it. Okay, so it becomes, <clears throat> so these are wrong, okay. So this becomes A not S or A S not. What just happened? <laughs> it's really interesting, right? <laughs> so we just uh, reach the same goal or the same result from the two different ways. Right? So eventually the mux, including the inverter here, the logic here is basically a extra logic. So I think someone if someone doesn't know that um it should be an X or gay at the very beginning, then they can still use a standard way to find out the logic uh, circuits using the truth table and then simplify it and then write it down the logic equation. But eventually after it's getting simplified, it becomes the same circuit, still the X or logic. So the way we found the X or, the X or gay for this circuit was from a different way, right? We are looking at the one X or A is a nod, right? So from that, which is not the really conventional way to simplify the logic or find the circuit, right?
we're going to always do the same thing here, okay? Unless you are not using a, you are not including the XOR gate into it, but instead you provide, so for example, you wrap, wrap up this whole chip from here, right? So it has two inputs. So you invert it outside of the chip, so the chip becomes a pure MUX instead of a uh, XOR gate. Okay. Mm. But I think I still want to introduce the mug circuit because um, we're going to use it for the ALU design. So if there's a general purpose mug over here, two, the two to one. Uh, mux, you have a selecting bit here, this is Y, this is A and B. And this becomes S, A, B, Y, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Or let's name it A0 and A1. If S is 0, we're selecting A0. So for all these S as an input, we just duplicate A0, which is 0, 0, 1, 1. If S is 1, it's selecting A1, it's just duplicate A1, which is 0, 1, 0, 1. <laughs> Okay, here. And the next becomes can be a bit difficult to simplify from the logic equation. So it's better to use a K map. Because there are too many ones, right? Four ones. Sometimes it can be challenging if you just deal with the uh, Boolean algebra. But do K map. Okay. S A one A zero example zero one zero 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 one 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 zero <laughs> this guy is zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 that's a really classic static hazard happening here in between these two okay that depends on how you group them if we group these two and these two then there will be a static hazard static one hazard so during a simulation whenever the signal trying uh, changes from here to here, there will be a, because the time delay, there will be a glitch. Okay, it's an error. So in order to get rid of that, we, because this, I, theoretically, it works. We already grouped all the ones. It should be, should be uh, working, but it's not ideal. So usually we'll group these two as well to get rid of the stack hazard. So these two combines, becomes as not A1 is getting flipped, so it becomes A0. These two, A1, which makes sense, right? So 0 will pick up A0, 1 will pick up A1, and it's the OR logic. However, this is not good enough. Theoretically, this looks great, like the MUX. We have to add another min term here, which is S is getting flipped, so S is canceled. It's A1, A0. Okay. So you have S, A0, A1.
as not a zero and logic or as a one. Or a one a zero. So I have three or logic. How to do it? How to combine the three or? You can use the three input or gate, right? If you don't have it, you can combine two first, and then these two. How many transistors you are having here? Two, two, two. No, four, right? Twenty-two. Right. Twenty-two transistors. Can we make it easier? Can we make it smaller? Of course, you have to use the transmission gate version of MUX. TG. So this is exactly the thing you want to use for our layout in the, in the lab, actually. <clears throat> It's just the four transistors. So NMOSes are good at passing what? Remember? Zeros, yeah, and PMOSes are good, good at passing ones. So if you compose them in parallel, you can pass both zero and ones without any problems, right? That's why we pray for transmission gates over uh, pass gates, which is just simply one transistor over here. Okay, it's called pass gate, PG. The transmission gates, TG, performs better than PG. <clears throat> so will this do the work, do the job as a MUX? What is S doing here? Is it making a selection? If S is 1, what's going to happen? That's a PMOS. If S is 1, what's going to happen? The PMOS is off, right? But NMOS is. If S is 1, S not is 0, right? So this NMOS will be off. And because this is the 1, this PMOS will be off as well. So A is not passing stuck there right if s is zero this pmos is on this nmos is on so b will reach y so when s is one it's selecting b and pass it to y if s is zero this becomes one this is zero okay this nmos receive a, a zero for the gate which is lower than the threshold voltage so the nmos here will be off and uh, because S is zero, so S not is one. So one is not going to turn on the PMOS as well. So B will stuck there and not passing through. Okay, but for A, you got zero for the PMOS, so the PMOS is on, and um, S not is one, so the NMOS is on as well. So A will pass. So with S is zero, A will pass this uh, TGN reach Y. So this is a pretty good max actually. Only take like four 
transistors instead of 22. Okay. And we're going to use the MUX to select the different functionalities of the ALU. Okay. If you are doing addition, then um, you just enable the adder in the circuit using the MUX. Okay. You'll figure out the, the circuit in the, in the lab tutorial. Okay, so you know why we are using these mugs in the in the in the lab in the future. Okay, for the high speed flyer, it's gonna be a next Tuesday's lab. So these are the input and outputs of the. Flighter doesn't matter if it's a high speed flighter or the regular flighter or carrier look ahead flighter, which I'm going to introduce in a bit. It's just uh, taking three inputs and give you two outputs. So that's the logic equation for the S. That's a logic equation for C0 or carry out. According to the textbook, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through the, the procedure to derive the equations. It just takes a lot of effort and nobody can remember it. I have to look at notes, so it's not making sense. So tedious. But this is a conclusion. I mean, after you do the, all the De Morgan's law and uh, substitute things around, you're getting A or B or CI, CO naught or ABCI. CO naught equals A naught or B naught mm -hmm. and we are going to design the AOI logic and stick diagrams from these two logic equations for the high speed flighter instead of using all the logic gates. I mean, everyone can design a flighter just looking at the logic, right? Just combine all the inputs, um, fit them into the specific gates, like OR gates, AND gates, inverters, and combine them together to make a circuit, which is very simple. However, if you are using AI logic and uh, SIG diagram, it's going to give you a way smaller footprint and a, a smaller number of transistors uh, to be used in the circuit as well. So let's start from this one. How do we do it? Because there's just so many inputs in here, so it's difficult to put two bars and do the De Morgan's law. So we can just, uh, um, assuming there's a bar on the top, and then we invert it, use the inverter afterwards. What about that? Okay, just put two bars on top. Let's do the steel itself, right? So we're not looking at the top bar, just looking at this and assuming that this is, so we can start using the AOI logic, right? So it's the OR and so on and so forth, right? So let's just draw the circuit and you eventually add an inverter after that. Okay, so these are three <laughs> inputs. That's the AND logic. So these two should be in series or in parallel for the PMOS. That's right. I think so too. But why on my notes I put it in series? Oh no, it's actually at the bottom. Yeah, that's right. So, so these will be in parallel as well, right? So I'm going to start with these ones first on the top. If I have um, these three, which is ABCI. And now these three should be in series. In parallel with C O naught.
Okay, now let's do the animals. <clears throat> A, B, C, I are in um, series for the animals. That's a uh, non logic. <clears throat> and these three, and this, the, the two of these, because it is an logic, so for the animals, they should be in uh, series. However, this is just a one single transistor. Based on our experience, we want to put it on the top or, or at the bottom. Because these three will be in parallel, right? And that's a single transistor. It's going to be something like this. Okay. Do we want to put the single transistor on the top or at the bottom? We always got issues if we put it at the bottom. So we want to probably put it on the top. Okay. C O not. Okay. Again, in the lab. Please do not just directly uh, staring at my layout and duplicate it. You know, you, you should draw the stick diagrams and then design your own layout from the stick, di stick diagrams drawn on the paper. So now the next step is the stick diagram. Okay. How many transistors? Seven. So we need eight nodes. Where should we start with? Remember, three parallel transistors looks like this, right? It's three parallel transistors. You got three parallel transistors. Let's finish this step first. And um, there is a three transistors in, in series and one in parallel. Okay. How would you do that with this one liner here? I'll let you guys think about it for a second. For this, one liner to implement this connection here in the logic. How? It's basically, it's three transistors in series. Since you already connect them in series like the, in the one-liner, so uh, you can treat these ones as one transistor, but just longer, right? Okay? So it's basically just two parallel transistors, right? It's very simple. How would you do that over here? And there might be two ways to, to, to make the connections, and there will be the, one of them is better than the other one. Anyone come over here and enjoy? I'll give you a few minutes to work on it.
since we are treating these the three long uh, three transistors as one long transistor so it's just basically two parallel transistors remember the two parallel transistors how do we do that it's either either this right or this so think about it which which one should we use and why What if we use this one? So it's just find out three transistors here in the row, and this is one transistor. I want to put these two parts in parallel, and I'm going to use this one, use this way to do it. Will that work? So this is you introduce the line from the top, and then it splits into two branches. But for this one, it's different. You split it at the very beginning, and then it goes through these two transistors and merge into one. So if we split into two, for example, this is the one transistor, which is this guy, and these are the three transistors. Mm -hmm. How do we do, do it this way? Seems to be impossible. Because if this is one of the trans is the C not C O not transistor here, um, this pin is already occupied, is already used, cannot change it, which is fine. Okay, it's just uh, that you cannot split it from here anymore. Do you? Let's see, if I draw a line here, what's going to happen? I'm trying to split into, into two branches and then merge it here. Is that correct? What's the problem here? So I'm using this topology. Which trace is making a trouble? If I introduce a line split, this is one CO naught, and this is three series transistors, and then merge, and this is the output. What's wrong with it? Mm. You see this output, this output is shorting to where? It's shorting to the output here. So you are basically shorting these two together, right? So this wouldn't work. I have to consider this topology for the two parallel transistors. So during the midterm exam, when you are seeing something like complicated uh, stick diagrams or OI logic, always remember a three parallel transistor looks like this and two parallel transistor looks either this or this. So you can try these two different ways and see which one will work for you for the circuit. So now this doesn't work. So we have to consider this topology. So how do we make the connections? Let's still assume this guy is a CO not transistor. So the three parallel transistor get an output over here, right? That's the output. And we want to split that output into two branches. One goes through a CO naught transistor. And we split it and let it go back here and run through the three transistors and merge 
here and introduce the output in the middle. Is this the best solution? No. So what is this what is this, this metal layer here? The metal what? Which metal layer we are using for this trace? Metal one, what is this? What is this? Also metal one, right? So there will be a problem. You are shorting the two metal ones in your physical layout. How can I get rid of that problem? Hmm? No, 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 no. Yes. Then what? Right? Is it done? For the PMOS? Yes. Let's look at the NMOS. Here's the output. Three transistors in a line, which is very simple. So let's just do this. Three transistors in a line, grounded. Is this a good way to do it? I mean, I'm assuming these are A, B, C, I, right? Are we having A, B, C on the top? Actually, we do, see? These guys are here, right? These guys, we just did it. So it's good, we keep A, B, C, I here, no problem. Okay. So let's move to the next. What about these, these ones? So for the one liner, you need a one transistor first and then three in parallel. So what's the topology for three in parallel? Again, one more time, I'm just repeating myself, okay? It's the same topology you should do for the three parallel transistors. So in that case, this one has to go through one transistor. This is unavoidable, avoidable, right? Have to, because it's already making a connection to this guy. And based on the circuit here, it has to go through the first one first, right? So which is the, gonna be this guy. Okay, so this pin is basically this pin. Okay, this pin is here. What should we do? This, okay, and how? Okay, now let's name the name of the gates. So because uh, it's ABCI, it's a series transistor in here, so it matters, so it's ABCI. What about here? It's a bit off, I think, right? So it becomes ABCI. <laughs> Only B is aligned. Yeah, you may be able to optimize it later, but. Mm, can we change it? What's happening here? I mean, can we still change it? So which is easier to change? Are we going to make changes here to make the layout easier to align A and CI instead of having A and CI, the signal lines getting crossed? Or should we modify the schematic? Because this won't pass an NCC check. 
if we directly draw a line like this. Okay. So what, what should we do next? Yeah. Okay. Does it matter if you flip one of these in the schematic? Doesn't. Mm -hmm. So just modify the schematic, then you can do a one um, directly <laughs> draw one line for the polysilicon. Okay. Um, I'll let you do it for your layout. Okay. What about the other ones? So here we got three parallel transistors, so they are equivalent. And this must be CO naught, because it's just a single one here. It's aligned. This is CO naught perfectly. Okay, so this is definitely aligned. And for the three parallel transistors, it doesn't really matter, right? It can be any order. Okay, if it doesn't match, make sure go back to schematic and um, make some. Uh, changes accordingly so you can pass in CC check. So sometimes when it's getting complicated, the circuit's getting complicated, you may have like over more than 10 NCC errors. A lot of things doesn't match. I just have to be patient and you make some modifications to the circuit in order to make them match. And also if you're just directly staring at my layout and duplicating my layout to your uh, into your uh, EDA tool or electrical ISI, uh, you may have actually may have more SNC errors sometimes because you probably didn't pay attention to one of the pores. If you do it by yourself, then you know exactly which one should be which. Mm -hmm. It's actually faster and better a lot of times. What about CO? Is this done for this guy? Or S? Is this S? Is this S? No, we don't have a bar on the top, so this is basically S not, right? Do we have we didn't have a bar on top? I just added two bars. So this is S not. So we need an inverter here. Right? That's input. So this becomes S. Right? This is way smaller, probably three or four times smaller than the the regular one. If you directly build it from case using this logic, it's like four times larger than this one. So it's not just larger, also slower. You cannot run the high speed uh, frequency or clock into it. Okay, so this is a, a really optimized logic or structure of the of the adder. What about CO? Because uh, you got two outputs for the slider. Yeah. And this is a circuit. This is CO not actually. So CO is some uh, is it's the entire thing here, but I had a bar on the top. Okay, so we can just feel free to directly build a circuit based on this logic. This is easier than S, I believe. Parallel or series? Wait, why well, I'm having a different circuit here? Hmm. Hmm. I may have used a different logic for this one. Okay. So if you don't, if you just use A not B not, not instead of A and B's. Mm -hmm. And um, in series, right? 
Let's start from this one probably. Is this good to start with? I mean, if you have or or logic here, <laughs> what's happening with it? So I have A B. Because that's the unlogic, so it's in parallel with a lot of things over here. So this is um, an NAND gate, so if you got this and this in parallel, series with this. And also, we probably prefer this one on the top, actually. I should have joined it on the top, swap them. Okay, we probably don't have time to do the NMOS, but let's just look at the PMOS version here. So six. Right, so two in series. And CI, let's do the C, CI not first. <clears throat> this guy, and two in parallel, right? <clears throat> wait, um, wait, something's wrong here. Oh, no, it's right. So from here, split into two branches, one here, one here. Okay, and then merge into here. Okay, it's actually, okay, it works. Okay, what about unmosis? So these two blocks should be in series. These are in parallel, so got this first. I got three. This two in parallel first. And then okay. right. we'll come back to this um, on Monday next week. So Friday will, will be the midterm exam, right? Fifty five minutes. Review the quizzes and homework assignments. Nothing will beyond, go beyond that to be very straightforward. Okay. See you on Friday.